What's up, everybody? This is Carrick with ACG, and it's my continuing mission to bring you reviews that aren't two minutes long, or hey, filled with sponsor bullcrap. Today, I bring to you the review for Cartoon Network Battle Crashers, a title that tries to be one part gauntlet, one part Streets of Rage, and about six parts Cartoon Network's heavy hitters, merging folks from Uncle Grandpa Adventure Time and a couple others into a three dirty dwarves style of side scrolling beat em up all across various levels based on the cartoon's locations. Developed by Magic Pockets, the game is out now for PS4 and Xbox One. Let's see how it did, shall we? As always, if you like the video, eh, maybe subscribe. So here's my review for Cartoon Network Battle Crashers. Traveling Wilbur is the game, the hell of a real Groundhog Day moment, and developing via the model, just how little can we spend on this goddamn thing anyway? Hell, let's change it up. Let's do graphics first. You know, I can't lie, there is a couple moments here and a couple cool ones, and while the animation is almost shockingly bare, like the moment you realize Stephen doesn't blow a bubble at all, the bubble just erupts from his face like some kind of pink herpes boil. The fact that all the characters from the various cartoons appear and are at least passable representations of themselves on screen is actually pretty cool, from Gumball to Uncle Grandpa himself. And to be honest, it was interesting seeing them trucking around the game world taking out pigeons that were burning alive and floating land pufferfish with laser shields. Only because that would be interesting regardless. Because when you look at this game, from the special power cartoon clip to the levels themselves, everything else is pretty goddamn dire. This is just some of the most poorly done effects I've seen in a game, resulting in an almost fake 3D effect at some times where items around the game were World feel like they aren't even connected, just skating around. Backgrounds almost completely static, aside from some lines to look at or waves or clouds repeatedly passing by in the same two damn patterns. And it's also threadbare. It feels like it's going to fall apart the moment you turn it on. Even when the going gets hot and heavy and pissed off crystal creatures are erupting from enemy spawners and old ladies are magically freezing you in a library by saying, shh, it somehow still feels like almost nothing is going on. But of course, that doesn't stop the game from not being able to keep a solid frame rate, which is a little bit like asking somebody who is sitting down to sit down more and they fucking can't do it. You look at what's on the screen, and trust me, this is Xbox 360 at the best, and you wonder to yourself if suffering through it is enough to get a spot on a goddamn Make-A-Wish Foundation. Without a shadow of a doubt, aside from the caricatures themselves, this is proof positive that Cartoon Network absolutely hates kids. In fact, when you look at it as a package, it's a threadbare presentation at the most, and basically it insults a subject matter from the very moment the game stutters to a start to the very moment you leap to turn it off. Think about it this way. This is a game about animated characters with almost zero animation. Sound? music, and voice. And of course, sound is up first, and uh, it is friggin' terrible. Some of the worst, crunchiest, low-bit sound I've heard in years. I mean, the first time you attack someone with your bubblegum attack, it sounds like someone else is smashing a goddamn glass bottle into a bar in an attempt to kill you before you have to experience more of it. And you'll be wondering what the hell is actually going on throughout almost the entire game. Every attack hits with a synthetic thump with no effects applied whatsoever, and many attack sounds that are the same or don't have any real variety at all. The first time I used a flamethrower and it sounded like one of those compressed air cans you get at Staples, I knew shit was going downhill fast. And it only gets worse from there. Poorly done, poorly mixed, poor variation, pour me a scotch, because this is only getting started. Music. Oh look, another category that can bring me nothing but despair. But wait, you know what? This actually isn't bad. It's not bad at all. It's also not great, but it's typical beat em up music that I would have expected and has a sheen of a writer who just snorted 400 smashed up tartan tinies and then chased it by freebasing sweet and low. Every gamey, little bit of filled, crunchy synth line that you would expect in a fighting game is actually here. I would actually rate the music good. That is, of course, if they had more than one overall theme, and they don't, so you end up hearing pretty much the same music throughout the entire game a simply incalculable number of times. Honestly, I would say average to okay music, but we don't know yet if that's a sign of effort or, well, accident. Voice. Or maybe I'll just call it not voice, because that's right, none. Ladies and gentlemen, a game that strength is on its art and on its voiceovers doesn't have voice. That's like watching Executive Decision and Steven Seagal dies 10 minutes into it. Oh sure, you do have some random intern that comes and screams and grunts an unknown number of times into someone's mic at their desk Fruity Loop studio, but that is pretty much it. <laughs> Come on, it's absolutely unacceptable for a game based around its animation and its voice to have barely any animation and no voice at all. Good job. Gameplay. 
All right, so this is a beat em up. So a bit about the obviously deep and meaningful story. Uncle Grandpa leaps through cartoon universes, sucking up folks to battle for, honestly, I couldn't actually tell you what it's for. But it appears that while doing all this, some crystals from other dimensions fell all over the world and they spawn bad guys the group has to fight. Or that happened prior. I really couldn't tell because I pretty much started tuning out almost instantly. Now, basically you jump in with up to four players into various levels, unconnected really to anything other than the overall themes of locations in the cartoons and battle it out against random enemies spawning in the game world. Now, as you play, you unlock new moves for the characters and new attacks, which are bound to various buttons and are attacks ranging from what looks like a frying pan explosive to bubblegum shields. It all certainly can't be called unimaginative, but it really can't be called good either. Now, I get it. I may not have had a lot of positive stuff to say about the game, but there is one little bit of genius wrapped up in this, and that's that every character's attack does something unique and makes them more useful against a particular enemy or environmental hazard. Steven's bubblegum breaks enemy shields much faster, while Uncle Grandpa's flamethrower hurts ice enemies quicker and can light folks on fire. Water pistols put out fires or put out enemies that are on fire, and other characters can do even more. That was actually incredibly cool, and in co-op, you can totally see how this would be useful if the game were hard or worth playing again. But it's not. This is ridiculously repetitive and is a romp through the levels, taking out bad guys and bosses, which also, strangely enough, don't make a lot of sense because at least one of those bosses doesn't exist anymore in that particular cartoon world because they were destroyed in prior seasons. If that's not all, the game has one of the worst designed ideas for depth I have ever seen. After you go through the two levels of every main sublocation, you're informed at the end that to go farther, you need to unlock an item that is, wait for it, hidden in one of those two past locations. That's right, many of the boring, unmoving, filled with terribly sparse locations has to be gone through a second time to realistically clear it and move on. Listen, I can only imagine what developing a game while freebasing the collected gases of a Bangladesh sewer would be like, but seriously, how someone did not put the stops to this prior to shipping, I will never know. I mean, when you think about it, a gauntlet-style beat-em-up is almost like a cosmic get-out-of-jail-free card. You could base an entire game on the legendary adventures of NC, post-Justin Timberlake, as they try to escape the evil clutches of the grab ass rapist society that rules the entertainment biz. And you could still have a winner, with them popping and stopping cartoon-style as they defeat lecherous old men. Instead, here, we're witness to one of the most drab, terrible, repetitive, poor-running, ill-designed misuses of awesome IPs since Superman on the N64. Oh, hey, look, it's Fun Factor. No. I mean, no, come on, no. It's boring, repetitive, sounds terrible, looks bland, and its gameplay and enemy patterns are so simplistic it makes Asteroids look like a well-planned reverse rock gangbang. Just think about this for one second. Here are some games better than Cartoon Network Battle Crashers that don't have a right to be. Shaq Fu, Michael Jordan Chaos in the Windy City, those fucking Hamburglar games, and Fight Club, which is a game where you can unlock a friggin' virtual avatar of Fred Durst. So as you guys know, I rate games on a buy it for sale rent or never touch it again. This is never touch it again. I mean, come on. The only reason I don't do an unacceptable game found on this game is because one, it doesn't crash ever. And two, it's actually got a good music track or two. And as you guys know, I don't think devs wake up and say, let's make this. I think in fact, they somehow probably feel worse than I do right now. Actually, that's probably impossible, but I bet you they feel close. This game is worth approximately negative dollars. And if you paid five bucks for it, that would be 25 too many. So anyway, that's it for me. I hope you guys liked the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Check out Twitter or Patreon. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Peace out and enjoy the rest of your week.